Hello everyone, um, Dave from Mary Arachnids. Uh, we're going to attempt to feed just a couple tarantulas today. Um, this is the Ornithoctonae species Laos female. Um, she hasn't fed since the second day that I've had her. So we are throw a cricket in there and we're going to see what happens. She is located back here. She hasn't really done much um, other than back there. She just did a little bit of webbing uh, in that area and that's really the extent of it. She hasn't, uh, oh, she come out and got that quick, didn't she? <clears throat> that was pretty stinking fast. So uh, let me pause you, we'll turn her around and see if we can get a look at her. Okay, I'm gonna hold you um, because I'm trying to hold the camera and this little light at the same time. There's not a really good way to get a view of her because of where her webbing is. Um, I can't get it from this side. Over here because her webbing clouds the side of the enclosure and you know a straight on shot I can't get light above her uh, like I would normally with other tarantulas because uh, of where she is and being under this log you really can't get a good shot of her so it's unfortunate she's a very very pretty spider. Um, I wish she would come out and I mean you didn't really even see much of anything else just a flash that was that was a pretty quick takedown by her, but uh, yeah, you can see she's doing a little bit of moving in her web. And they will be, um, they, they can be arboreal-ish. I don't want to say that they are semi-arboreal, I don't like that word, but uh, they will um, climb, uh, they will web up. If you put a funnel or a cork tube in there, they will... You know, vertically, they will go in it just like uh, the Encio Catella olivaceae has and a Syria pogapus hotty hotty, same kind of deal. But they they do just perfectly fine on the ground and webbing up. And again, this is one of the reasons why I made the enclosure like I did, um, hoping that she would utilize this space and web, especially, you know, you got that cool little crevice back here in this thing. I was hoping that she would utilize some of this stuff and web up in this area, but she has done, she's pretty lazy. To be honest with you, um, I'm glad she ate though. Um, again, I, I that's the only second time I've even tried to feed her since I got her. And you can see her patterning there. It's not not coming out great on camera, but that's the best I can give you. Okay, we have two more that we're going to attempt to feed. Um, let me get them down. Okay, we are going to attempt to feed the mature male Holotheli. Longapes, which uh, was formerly the Holotheli sanguinicepis, and that's pretty much still what most people are selling them as, um, but there was a change in the name, so it's Holotheli longapes. I haven't seen him out since he matured. This will be the first time I attempt to feed him since he matured. These guys are very quick, super quick, um, as most dwarfs are, so let's see if maybe, just maybe, he will come out. He did. Oh, yeah, he did. That's nice. Oh, that's beautiful. I love when mature males eat because you don't get to see it very often. Um, let me see. I don't know if me trying to... He's just going to go back underneath. He's very, very beautiful. Um, you know, just based on what we can see of him. See how long his legs are in the back there. He, he is a spindly buddy. They remind me of what the Dolichotheli diamantinensis ended up looking like when they matured out. Uh, really, really long and lanky. Um, still had the color. Now, a lot of males in different species will dull down at maturity, and then a lot of them will uh, actually be the more colorful of the species. So, like uh, Pamphibedius, well, the males will be colorful, the females won't be, uh, at least not as much. They'll have some streaks of the color, but not as much. Um, not like the males. The males are really bright and, you know, blue, or the, the purples and the pinks in the male Pamphibedius are pretty cool. Um, and you go to like uh, your Pistolotheria uh, genus where the males will be a dull brown when they mature. Uh, they still have patterning, but there is no vibrancy to it. It's a really, really dull. You almost look like they, they looked better before they molt than after they molt. So hopefully we'll see this guy out a little bit more. I'm trying to find a... Uh, person that may be interested in him um, I have not had any success yet so uh, this may be something that uh, uh, we may have to keep him with us till uh, his time is up so we're gonna feed one more um, hopefully 
I'm sure that one's ready to eat too. Uh, that one molted a couple days before this guy here, so we should be good to go. Okay, here is Snow. Uh, this is the suspected female. Grandma stole a pulchra. Yeah, pulchra. Um, yeah, I knew we would eat. Now, that was a mealworm. These are mealworms I actually raised myself. I think I got about three or four, maybe even 500 of these little buggers. Um, we're going to do a get some into the geckos. Tried feeding them to the turtle. Turtle doesn't like them. Uh, turtle's pretty much a fish and worm kind of a dude or dudette. This is the first meal. Um, post molt so I think we may do one more quick feeding of the uh, Ephibopus rufusins um, yeah we'll, we'll I have another mealworm here so we're gonna try giving that one a mealworm and see what will happen still no uh, no other molts to speak of um, still waiting on a few uh, the Serrata Jars Darlingi's close um, of course the three that I've been waiting for the actually four the Fauna Palma Hensi the Brachypelma Elbiceps the Brachypelma Bami and the Davis Penaloris male um, still waiting on them still waiting on the uh, Pisolotheria miranda um, and the Formictopus cancerides I think is getting close to the last one I have left um, oh I, I did have one molt that I don't know if I showed you guys uh, that one the well of course you saw the Terranal Pelmus uh video but uh, my Plesio Pelmus species uh, Bolivia molted also Santana um, Seems to be doing fine. Didn't gain a lot of size, but got a little bit more vibrant of color. So uh, we'll look forward to that one soon. So no, you're being boring. You're just sitting there. Yeah, I'm really hoping this one's a female. I really am. So we shall move on and finish up with the Epibulpus rufusins. Um, see what uh, see what that one has to offer. Okay, so after you know the extended period of time that this one never burrowed, it actually has burrowed. You can see the entrance there, and that goes back to the back corner. Uh, let me see if I can. Yeah, you can see the back corner there. There's a spot where uh, it likes to come out of too. But we're going to throw this worm on there and if it does some moving maybe he will um will come out this is eddie again we don't know if this is a male or a female but i named it eddie after iron maiden's eddie there we are just a hammer there's just like no no nothing with this tarantula just massive hits every time uh this really really risen to the top of my my favorite list this this species right here um yeah I pretty much no doubt about it i just i just I love this guy uh or girl um i'd like to get a couple more really um yeah i wouldn't mind having three or four of these this is a species i i would really like to i really would like to work with the epipopus genus period uh all of them, you know, looking for a couple of ottomans, uh, you know, I have the two Muranus, but I wouldn't mind getting a couple more, and then uh, a couple more of the Sinanathus. I'd like to have three or four of each. Um, you know, it's something that I would enjoy to work with, and, and you know, like I said, there's other things that I probably um, would trade uh, for them uh, if, if the opportunity arose, but uh, uh, definitely sometime this summer I'll probably... Hopefully, if Pelt Friction still has a few more of these left, I'll order a few more of these in the summertime. So, um, you want to try one more? We could try one more. We'll, we'll pull out, uh, 
cinder, the Epibopus murinus. Again, that one needs to eat again because I do believe it molted. Uh, just didn't bring the molt out because it has gotten bigger than the last time I've seen it. And you guys watch a feeding video of it. Oh, you know who we could feed? Let's not feed that one. You know who we could feed? I'll show you who we could feed. Okay, this guy's been out and about lately. Um, of course, he went back into his little hide there uh, while I was messing around with the enclosure. But this is the Brachypalma sabulosum. Now, this is a male. Come on, buddy. I hope he comes out for you guys because he is absolutely... He's absolutely stunning, really. The dark colors, the, the red settee on his back legs is just unreal. Now you can feel him. I know you can. We don't want him to dig, though. Oh, you're going to come and get him. Okay. If you're going to come and get him, you got to come and get him. You can't wait. That's the front end of the tarantula. I'm not going to mess with him right now. If he doesn't get that worm, then we'll, we'll throw another one in there, and then we'll wait till it turns into a beetle, and we'll get it out of there later. Now, I do that every now and then. I, you know, sometimes you just can't get him in time, and... The size of this tarantula and it seen that just molted um, if we have one that actually burrows down and turns into a beetle it's not going to uh, it's not going to hurt us any or hurt the tarantula any hey, you want to try this one there you go you got a little bit of oatmeal in there with you or sawdust or whatever that is. I'm sure he would eat another one if we put it in there, to be honest with you. Yeah, that's it. Please come out. Come on. I know you want to. You want another one? There he is. Look at him. He's something. He really is. He takes up that whole entire area in there. He didn't dig. Um, he didn't burrow down any farther than what that coconut hide gives him, but he does like to be in there. Uh, I was going to move him to a new enclosure, but because he's a male, we're going to leave him in here. So we'll, we'll, we'll go ahead and we will try and feed Cinder real quick and then end with that, that one. Okay, so here we are. This is Cinder. We're going to see. Uh, we're giving her something bigger than I normally do. And we're going to see what happens. Um, it's not a huge super worm, but it's a little bit bigger than I usually would probably give her at her size. I say her because I don't know. She was out and about the other day. So I think I fed her. Uh, I remember what it was. If I gave her a cricket the last time, I do believe it was a cricket. I just realized that I had bought a thing of calcium worms like I don't know about a month ago, and they've been sitting in the refrigerator. And I was going to use them for. A couple feedings and I forgot all about them so I think I'm just gonna give them to the geckos and it's 
See if Soul may like them because he's not a big worm guy. He likes his crickets, but. Come on, lady, what's going on? There you are. Just <laughs> Ephibopus, I'm telling you, you can't go wrong. If you don't mind, you know, only seeing glimpses of them. Now, a lot of people don't like that. A lot of people don't like tarantulas that live in holes and, and only see them every now and then. I do see her out every night. I do see the other Moranus out every night if their enclosures are in an area where I can actually see them. Uh, the Cyanonathus, not so much, um, but the, the Rupusins was out all the time until just recently it decided to uh, burrow. But, uh, yeah, if you don't mind, you don't mind that. You, if you want uh, a New World tarantula that's got a little bit of attitude, uh, you got to remember that the urticating hairs are on the pedipulps instead of the back end, so uh, they can flick you coming out of their burrows instead of, you know, if their butt is in their, their enclosure, you got to keep that in mind. Um, I don't know how bad their hairs are. Uh, they are, uh, they can be defensive. Um, all of them, all the Ephibopus can be defensive. Um, so they're a little bit more high strung new worlds than most. And I, I say they're, I think they're a good, if you're thinking about, you want to keep something new world, that's a little bit more feisty before you get into the old world African species. I think this is a great, great tarantula right here to start with. Uh, get it, get an Ephibopus murinus, you know, get it as a sling, an inch, inch and a half, whatever. And, and, uh, Give it a little bit of dirt to dig in, some things to put webbing around, and um, they're, they're fantastic. So, okay, well, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Um, I know most of the tarantulas you didn't really get to see the whole entire thing of very, very much. Um, they were kind of in and out, and uh, this is a discussion that I'm going to have, because I'm not really for or against this, but I'd like to do a video with it, but I'd like to do this with... Uh, a couple other other people from the YouTube community. So I'm going to present this to a couple people um, because I see a lot of people that that they keep their their spiders perfectly fine, you know. Because again, you can you can say to yourself that the enclosure is the burrow of uh, your tarantula, so you don't have to necessarily give them a hide, especially if they're in a darker area of your home. But uh, I do see a lot of people that on YouTube that don't have hides for them, and they have great takedown videos. Uh, and you get to see the tarantula a lot more. And, um, and again, I'm not saying anything bad about anybody. And I'm not saying anything that, you know, um, I don't get the views that other people do because my tarantulas are in more natural of a habitat, I think. And you don't get to see them as often. So you're, you're listening to me talk more than anything in my videos. And um, I, I'm going to consider changing a few enclosures and just doing a test and see. Uh, on a handful of tarantulas that uh, are just, uh, you know, a, a box with some dirt and a water dish and see what happens. So, yeah, uh, again, I don't know if I'll do another video before uh, the, the Terranochila species come in this week, uh, the Moranus tetes and the Moranus uh, Mozambiques. Um, if not, we'll do a, we'll do a video on those guys. They're, they're probably only going to be about a half inch, so they're going to be in vials. So I got to get vials prepped and ready to go, so, you know. Uh, basically, what I have set up for the Selenocosmia pirabumi and the um, Serratojarus marshalli. So, thanks for watching, and we'll see everybody soon.